It's high time that we start living the high life around here. Today, we emphasize on the culture part of the show while minimalizing the cheaper and pop parts of it. Because as this show is classy enough to be on both this channel as well as the comic book channel, it had occurred to me that comics are art, and art is culture. And so it's about time that we bring that exact same schweb of essence to the wrestling channel. Which is why the focus of this episodic escapade shall be placed on... All right, don't worry, I'm not gonna be doing that voice for the entire episode. Now, if you thought that painting during the end credits of Rocky III was totally awesome, well, it is. Probably why wrestling's been trying to get a piece of that impossible dream for so long. But has the WWE ever made it in the fancy pants world of art? Well, let's find the f out as we examine these artistic exhibits. Street artist Shepard Ferry is known for his design of the Hope poster, and for his clothing line, which is clearly the true essence of what every renegade street artist is all about. But before A New Hope came out, Shepard first made a name for himself with the Obey sticker campaign. Now, something that not everyone knows about is that the face on the sticker is Andre the Giant. It all started when Ferry and his friends from the Rhode Island School of Design made posters and stickers featuring Andre. They started distributing their creations everywhere, but then out of fear of being sued by Vince McMahon, they decided to go with a less copyrighted image instead. Hmm, the selling out started earlier than I thought. So then they combined a brand new drawing design with a clever nod to Roddy Piper's film They Live with the word OBEY, and the rest was history. Rob Scamberger and his art are featured on the WWE show Canvas to Canvas. Oh, I get it, like the wrestling canvas to... to... police canvassing an area? You know what, I don't know what it means. Anyway, what I do know is that this means the WWE Network had a painting program on way before they delivered on the UK wrestling show that they promised us. Huh. Now, it should be noted that Rob does paint things outside of wrestling, but he is still probably best known for his portraits of wrestlers, which are pretty cool. Just so long as he sticks to painting pictures and not projecting images on the mat during a WrestleMania title match, because that would just be stupid. If you thought that Shinsuke Nakamura was the only wrestler slash artist in the WWE, well, that'd be plenty f***ing wrong. Because the excellence of execution is also excellent with a pencil too. And while we're on the subject of the Hitman, not only does Brett draw, but he was also drawn himself when he cameoed in The Simpsons. Ooh, this place has got old man stink. Longtime Bret Hart rival Jerry the King Lawler is also a rival for Bret on the artistic canvas too. I, oh, art canvas to wrestling canvas. Because the King is another wrestler who's good with the art. Maybe that's how their feud really got started. Maybe Jerry said that he was better than Bret and that Bret can't draw as good as he thinks he can. I. Oh wait, no, that's how Bret's feud with Ric Flair started. Oh. All right. Anyway, Jerry's talents were also paired up with another legend of the squared circle, Mick Foley, when he did the illustrations for Foley's book, Christmas Chaos. Finally, how about a wrestler who is a work of art himself, like Finn Balor? And I'm not just talking about his abs. Although... Aside from his Demon King persona, Balor has worn plenty of other patterns before he arrived in the WWE, with body paint representing comic book characters such as the Joker, Carnage, and Venom, just to name a few. And in case you still haven't figured out that he's a total nerd, well, Finn also really likes playing with Legos too. Okay, there's just a taste of WWE going art. And just remember, every time someone says that they don't believe in Shepard fairies, you have to clap your hands in order to save them.